I love the mailman. There's all kinds of neat shit here. What the fuck is this? Not for me. For the Harley. Not for me. Oh yeah. Oof. All right. Somebody definitely had some sage burning in their apartment. Watched a Gorilla Pod review video, and I saw that he was saying the large Gorilla Pod in the all black with the metal it says it holds more weight than the rest of them, but it actually doesn't. The Gorilla Pod SLR Zoom, which holds large cameras with zoom lenses, says it's like three kilos or something. Yeah, three kilograms. And he put a four kilogram weight on it, and it still didn't even budge. So I went with this one. They're like. $50 retail, but I got it on eBay for $35 shipped. Oh yeah, that feels super sturdy. I have a GoPro 4 Black, so I really don't think I'm going to have a problem with this thing not being able to hold the weight. Like I'm pushing down on that as hard as I can. That is ridiculously strong. I'm sure over time it'll get loose, but I've also seen other guys talking about how you can clean this with soapy water, and these come apart as well if you need to get gunk out of there, but if you clean it with soapy water, let it air dry, it gets stiff again. So, all right, that's awesome. other video bezel. Yeah, I mean, I can feel the difference in the plastic just in the weight alone. The older 90 to 93 is a much heavier, denser plastic and any pressure at all, it just snaps into pieces. This obviously will flex and bend a lot more. So this will be the one I'm putting in the car, clearly. Cool, so I just need to modify it now to hold my iPad. So I'm gonna have to grind some of this stuff smooth and I'm gonna put a bead of silicone around here like a rubber gasket so the screen doesn't press directly against the plastic. But that's awesome. And then this guy, what the hell? There's supposed to be more parts. Clutch pack, friction pad for the hub, installation rivet axle adjusters. Oh yeah, they're parkerized, that's right. And then a clutch push rod oil seal kit. So technically everything that's left on the Harley that needs to be done is right here. And then there'll be no reason for anybody not to buy it. Hopefully that works. All right, so I have my original that I did a while back. The O-ring's kind of coming off. I can make a new one obviously, but I'm using this as a template to see where I need to cut back and grind out with the Dremel. So I've started the grinding, getting all of the little fins out of the way for the charging port and the headphone jack. I'm also leveling this edge. Pretty much ran it till the battery was almost dead. So I'm charging it back up now, but I can get all of this nice and smooth. And then I can put like in the LED install, I have this kind of industrial strength and you see how it's like super hard and super snaps back to where it's supposed to be. This is more of an industrial glue but then I also have this super soft rubbery kind of glue so I'm going to use this to make my o-ring around the edge here for the iPad to press against so the screen doesn't get damaged. Once all that's done it's just a matter of drilling a hole for the volume knob and maybe re-stickering this thing. I haven't decided yet if I want to sticker it or not. I still also need to wait for my new anti-glare fingerprint proof screen protectors to come in before I put everything back together final and put it back in the car. So no real rush on this project. I just want to get it done and in so that I can go back to having an iPad in the dash. Just a little more grinding, a little uh, notching here and there, and then I can put my brackets that I built back in there and bolt it all back together. So I finally got the console center bezel tombstone finished. The silicone worked better, I think, for making a rubber kind of O-ring than hot glue. It was a little easier to position where I wanted it because it wasn't obviously hot. And then I ground out for the home button so it fits in there nicely. 
I also picked up this fan on Craigslist because I noticed on super hot days, it seemed like the thing tended to overheat a lot. You may have seen that in another video. So I've got this ready to mount to the back of the bracket. And then I've got a power switch because the power adapter is connected to the accessory key on. So when you turn the key to accessory, it powers up. And then when you turn it to run and then hit start on most key switch starters, when you turn it to start, it disconnects the accessory so that your radio is not bumping while you're trying to start the car and it sends all the power to the starter so what was happening was it was seeing power to the ipad and then when i'd hit start and let it back off it would power on and power off and the ipads and iphones have a built-in safety circuit so that if it sees that happen too many times it thinks there's a short in the power supply so it stops charging and then you'd have to actually power it down and then power it back on it was a pain in the ass so i had a switch installed right above my volume toggle that i could just power off the radio circuit while I was starting the car and then once the car was started I could just power it on that way you didn't have the power on power off thing so I'm gonna wire this to that so that this is on whenever this is on and then that way it'll constantly be cooling it if it's too loud I may install another switch separately so that I can only power this on when I want to vice versa of the iPod connector so for now I have to figure out which of these wires out of the three is the power and the ground I'm gonna do a little testing to sort that out then I'll wire it in I may end up going ahead and wiring in another switch just so I don't have to open the dash up again to do this and then I can put the iPad into the bezel with the power connector and the headphone connector mount the rear support bracket to hold it in place and then tape this with some 3m double-sided tape to the back of that just so it's mounted and blowing directly onto the back of the iPad then I can put everything back together and finally have my iPad back in my dash so I'm gonna get on that it's gonna be kind of difficult in the car to video so I'll get shots as I can so I found this three-way rocker switch I'm gonna make sure it works obviously but in the middle is off and then up is on and down is on all right so I just tested the wires on the fan and figured out which one's power which one's ground and then the other one I think is just a temperature sensor to send info to the CPU but it is extremely loud so I definitely want to wire it on a separate switch so I can only turn it on when needed I don't want it running constantly even if it's behind the dash I think it's going to be too noisy for me it'll get annoying so I'm going to go ahead and get everything wired in though so it's ready for it and then I should be able to just mount everything up in one go center radio tombstone bezel in the 90 to 93 is a little bit narrower than the 94 to 97 so clearly there was a lot more finagling that needed to be done to get everything to fit but I did get it to fit it was just a little bit more of a pain in the ass than I'd hoped uh, I still cannot find my other vent so I've got a whole stack of vents but I particularly modded these with some velcro inside of them so they stay where they're supposed to so I gotta find my other vent but all in all I'm happy happy I found a two-way switch so when the key is to accessory it still doesn't do anything if I switch it to up then it turns the power on that way I can power cycle it if I need to get it to charge and not think that the power switch is shorted I also now have a down position I don't know if you can hear that but there's a fan behind everything now blowing directly on the back of the iPad. So if I get a high temp warning, I can just flick the switch all the way down. I don't need it to be charging when it's too hot anyway. That just heats it up more so. And it's normally at 100% just from riding around with it constantly charging. So I can flick that down, fan comes on, flick it to the middle, still off, flick it all the way up, I get power. And then again, when I turn the key to off, even if I leave that switch on, it shuts off. So it's got kind of a double safety, but if I put it to the middle and I go to start the car, it won't cycle on and cycle off and cycle on and cycle off due to the start switch, making the iPod think that there's a short in the power supply. Got the volume knob relocated down to here because this spot was too narrow. I couldn't get everything to fit like I was talking about before. This is much narrower than the 94 to 97, probably about a quarter of an inch on each side. I moved the volume knob down to here, which is perfectly fine. It's nice and easy to reach, even with e-brake down it's still not in the way so I can get to it as needed but I got a couple stickers I may end up stickering this I don't know if I feel like pulling it back apart again I'll definitely fill this hole and put maybe a little sticker over that but overall I'm real happy with the results I can turn it on and off as needed 
and uh, control it as I want. Thanks again for watching guys. I really appreciate all the likes and subscribes and comments. Be sure to comment on the last video if you want one of those EA Sports arm pad thingies just to have or if you want one of those PC games I'll mail you one out. It's not that expensive. I'll just send the discs instead of the whole box and everything. So make sure to comment, like if you like, subscribe if you want and as always guys keep modding.